This is how we ride. This is how we do. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have been doing a little bit of investigative reporting, and we have a report for you. Now, we do have a special video that I'm in the development of making right now. It's with Will Eggerman, and it has to do with a very interesting situation around the Power Eye Sprint Car series. And I'm not going to name the name of the series I'm talking about, because technically the series uh, may not be there. So, very interesting video that I have coming up very soon. Stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe. A very interesting story coming uh, for sure by the end of the weekend, if not sooner than that. I'm in the midst of trying to make it. But there are some things that is worth talking about right now, and they are very very interesting. Yes, I do have the sweater under the t-shirt look going right now. So, boom! That's what I'm talking about! But one of the very interesting things that happened over the course of last night's racing action at Golden Isle, uh, which we need to really appreciate what's going on in Florida with this late model scene right now. Most of the time in, in late model racing, like after this Florida Speed Week still is over, you're not going to have one of these types of events where all the big names of late mile racing are racing at the same track every single night. Because Lucas Oil and the World Outlaw split up, there will be a few marquee events throughout the year where you will see every single driver at an event, i.e. World 100s, Dreams, Prairie Dirt Classics, Florence North-South. 10% of this year's late model racing will feature the best of the best that we are currently getting in Florida. So we really need to appreciate what we are actually seeing. But one of the things that did occur last night was this situation with the timing and scoring versus the naked eye. And this was Golden Isles between the red 16 car to the inside is Tyler Bruning and the 5B blue car to the outside is Brandon Shepard or Brendan Shepard or however those guys say it. Which the announcing's been very weird this year. I, kn I know the first race of the year, Ruben completely missed the pass for the lead and was like lost. And last night there was situations where uh, drivers weren't even in heat races. There was even a situation where one of the heat race lineups on the on the Flow broadcast showed uh, the Chili Bowl lineup, but it was late models at the top of the screen. A lot of broadcasting errors. But regardless, Brandon Shepard and Tyler Bruning here. Coming to the line now, and this initially ended right there. Timing and scoring said it was the B5 of Brandon Shepard when the when uh, most everyone could see when they got to the start finish line, the 16 of Tyler Bruning actually beat him to the line, and this is for a transfer spot. And both of these drivers don't have any provisionals uh, from last year with Lucas Oil Late Mall uh, Dirt Series, so we can see at the line that Bruning beats him, but Shepard obviously does go ahead and, and, and inch, inch ahead of him here, I would say. Uh, you know, uh, right there, maybe you would say Shepard. Probably 10, 15 feet after the start-finish line, you would give it to Shepard. Now, Naked Eye shows 16. Timing and scoring says B5 Brandon Shepard. Now, what's a very interesting situation is I got text messages from a very high-up person in the racing officiating world. And he said to me, Swale, Lucas Oil Series director, opened a can of worms with that Heat 1 finish. I said, yes, he did, but I honestly saw the same. Yeah, it looked like the 16 got it, but the loop might not be at the flag stand. So now, the next time one is close, do you go by the naked eye or the scoring loop you use every other lap all night long? Referring to every position on the racetrack, in the deeps of the field, everywhere. We would always let guys know if the loop was short or past the flag stand. And told them that we are going by the loop, not the naked eye. So, very interesting comments. And if we do want to go by the naked eye, this is one race in particular where the naked eye told me that... The other guy won the event. Uh, I believe it was 2015, and, and this 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 image popped into my head initially. And we could also always think of uh, Ricky Thornton Jr. and Brandon Shepard at Davenport for you late model fans. You know what I'm talking about. That's the Larson Marks number two car that Shane Stewart's in the white and red. Yes, Kyle Larson, and yes, Justin Marks owning that car back in that day. And this is the final lap at Stockton. Donnie Schatz throws a slider on him. You know, I love sprint car racing, I love it. I, I, when I was watching Go Denial, I was like, this is a sprint car track. Please bring sprint cars. But this is to the checkered, and the checkered flag is right there. Now, I don't know about you people, but I can pretty much tell 
That is a win to Shane Stewart, but timing and scoring gave this win to Donnie Schatz, ladies and gentlemen. And he was presumed the winner of that event. It's very interesting to think about this and how the timing and scoring is actually going to be played out. I mean, this guy has a, has a really good point, you know. Sometimes the scoring loop, like we just saw there, like we had at Davenport a few years ago for the late model fans with Thornton Jr. and Brandon Shepard, and like we had with Bruning and Shepard last night, yes, the naked eye, we can tell, but the timing and scoring is not just about final transfer spots into the heat race and not just about wins at the end. It's about guys running 10th and 11th, where the camera and the eyes ain't watching, you know, where there's a couple hundred bucks on the line, you know, where there's positions that matter. Everyone else is being scored on that loop. And this guy higher up is saying that that loop is very important to major series. They find out where the loop is from the track. And then they tell people in the driver's meeting, all the drivers, hey, this is where the loop is at. If it's 10 feet after the start-finish line or 10 feet before the start-finish line, they're going to let them know that way the drivers are racing to a certain point. If that is the case and the series are telling these drivers where this loop actually is, then the eye test to the start-finish line should be thrown out, and I have to agree with him on this. You know, because how do you how, how, many, how many times now are we going to say, well, the camera says this, the defense has always said, the series have always said, just like that World Outlaw clip with, with Donnie Schatz, hey, the loop is the loop. This is how we're going. Now, this is when drivers need to vary... Uh, much pay attention to where they put the actual transponders on the race car, and there are rules for where you put them and, and how you how forward you can put them, where on what bar and all that. But, hey, this is a very interesting situation, and did the Lucas Oil Dirt Late Model Series open up a big can of worms? Because now, going out th throughout the rest of the year, you know, we can't go by the scoring loop, and if a driver who's running 10th or 11th says, I know I beat him to the start-finish line after the race... And, and request to, to and it shows video or whatever, how can the series now say, nope, nope, we go by the scoring loop when you had the first race on national publicated uh, uh, station say, no, uh, we're going by the uh, camera. The ca camera showed he beat him to the line. The loop doesn't matter. So very interesting situation. Very, very interesting. But this is how we ride. This is how we do. Ride must slide down.